Oh, howdy and hello everyone. Uh, what am I doing, you ask? Well, uh... Chargers! Every single time someone mentions them, a foamer either rages or finds inner peace. Go on, name another passenger locomotive in production that can beat the Chargers, and no, the F7 doesn't count. I'm gonna be honest, Siemens is getting a bit too comfy up there having next to no competition. So, let's look into who the brave warrior will be to dethrone Siemens. For those who are unfamiliar, the Siemens Charger is a family of diesel electric slash dual mode passenger locomotives designed and manufactured by Siemens Mobility for the North American market. Ever since their introduction in 2017, there is no doubt that they have dominated the North American passenger rail market. Chances are, if a passenger railroad wants to do locomotive, they'll get a Charger. And when I say Chargers are a family, I mean it. They come in all sorts of shapes and sizes, including, but not limited to... SC44s, SCB40s, ALC42s, ALC42Es, SC42DMs, EC42s, and of course, everyone's favorite, Ontario Northland. Despite mechanical issues that, as discussed in this glorious video that you should watch, are kind of the railroad's fault for maintaining a sports car like an XLI, it's kind of obvious to see the reasons why the Siemens Charger is doing well, because who else are they going to go with? MPI? So, taking out my convenient list of every single rail manufacturer in existence, we have, uh... No, ew! Progress Rail, aka the company that inhaled EMD that's owned by the company named after a dry worm, last made a passenger locomotive in 2016, which was the F-125, also known as the Spirit. But if you call this thing a Spirit, it will be physically impossible for you to be taken seriously. I say that, and now everyone will almost certainly be thinking, well wait, that's the competitor to the Charger right there, 4700 horsepower, tier 4, looks like some weird duck. It's just like Siemens. Well, guess what EMD doesn't sell anymore? The F-59 PHI, but also the F-125. As it turns out, the F-125 was never supposed to be sold to anyone but Metrolink, as it was specifically ordered and made for them. Meaning, the F-125 was a one-off and will almost certainly never be produced again. Recently, there have actually been rumors going around about Metrolink wanting more F-125s, but because EMD doesn't make them anymore, they're just thinking of going to Siemens and asking them if they can make a charger that would pretty much just be a Siemens-built F-125. And it appears that EMD doesn't really want to try and get back into the passenger rail market. I couldn't tell you why they won't, despite having a long history of being a major manufacturer of Amtrak locomotives in the 20th century. But whatever the case, it's pretty safe to say EMD is now out of the race for dethroning the Charger. Now we actually get into a manufacturer that could possibly cook up something to compete with the Charger. Stadler's US projects so far have consisted of just MU projects, mainly EMUs, DMUs, and BEMUs, or as I like to call them, BMUs. Stadler seems to be the company that railroads will go for if they either don't like Siemens, or you like to use the excuse of... It's not old, it's just... Aged. So far, the people who have gone for Stadler have been Caltrain, Metra, Caltrans, Metrolink, and probably one that I'm forgetting. The problem with Stadler is that they seem to only want to make multiple unit sets, which can be a problem because some companies can't own multiple unit sets for either money reasons, space reasons, costs, maintenance, laziness, dire stuff, really. I would also like to mention that Stadler helped in the production of the F-125. I don't know how much they contributed, but if you ever wanted to know what would happen if a flirt and an F-40 had a child, this would be your result. So Stadler definitely has an edge to possibly making a competitor loco, but until they make a tier 4 loco that doesn't have EMD as the father, then I don't think they have that big of a chance. I'm only adding GE so that people don't get mad that I didn't, because I hate to break it to you guys, but... GE's last passenger locomotive was the P-42, which had its last units built in 2001. 
Ever since then, they've only focused on freight, mainly mass producing GVOs like the world will end if they stop, and now experimenting with battery stuff with Wobtech. Still freight though, so uh, yeah, I highly doubt GE will even take a look at passenger locos. And so we finally made it to the manufacturer I think truly has a chance at dethroning the charger, Olstom. If you've been paying attention to the rail industry recently, you'd know that in recent times, Siemens has been fighting with Alstom mainly for high-speed rail-related projects, particularly Brightline West. If you don't know what Brightline West is, use those cool things you've got called opposable thumbs and search it up on your phone. I'm not a history teacher. Siemens was proposing the American Pioneer 220, a train set that I will from now on be referring to as the AP220 because I'm not saying that full name every time. Alstom was proposing a juiced up version of the Avalia Liberty, a train set that's currently being tested along the Northeast Corridor for Amtrak's Acela service. Now you're probably wondering why I said being tested, despite the fact that these things first started testing in 2020. Well... There's a difference between mechanical issues due to railroads being broke and mechanical issues due to rushing, and the Avalia Liberties are a prime example of a rushed train set. I'm talking pantographs balancing, leaky tilting mechanisms, windows spontaneously exploding at high speeds. I don't care how problematic you say the chargers are, at least they went into service. The reason for these mechanical issues is because Alstom apparently rushed the design phase for the Avalias and started building them before the simulations they needed to finish were done. Because of this and a few other reasons, like the ability to climb steep grades and a party car, Brightline chose Siemens, and Alstom reacted accordingly by throwing the company equivalent to a temper tantrum. In light of Brightline choosing Siemens, Alstom wrote a multi-page PDF pointing out everything they could that if you squint your eyes and look the opposite direction is wrong about this decision. This is a good time to also mention that Brightline already has a maintenance contract with Siemens for their Florida service, which uses Siemens locos and coaches. So I don't know what Alstom expected. Past that interesting situation, Alstom has also made some coaches, some multiple units, but no locomotives yet, which is kind of a bit iffy for them to throw into the charger. But if Alstom were to make a locomotive, I'd have a feeling it'd have a pretty good chance at knocking Siemens down a bit. So in the end, it looks like it's going to be Alstom or Stadler to be the one tool to throw in Siemens and their charger. With it, let's be honest, most likely being Alstom who will be the ones to inevitably do it. So it looks like we've got a good old battle between the Germans and the French, with Switzerland kind of just existing- Oh wait, hold on a second, where have I heard this before? <laughs>